Okay, you're going to have a test tomorrow, and it's about eight problems long, and it's all about lines. So the first thing we're going to do is graph them. So it says y equals negative 3x plus 6, so I can see my y and x are on opposite sides. So the way to graph it is to use the slope and the y-intercept of the line. That's the best way. So again, negative 3. That's your slope. That needs to be over 1, and then positive 6. So the y intercept 6, so I go up 6. So stay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And there's my first point. Okay, so because the 3 is negative, we move down, and I always go to the right. Don't ever move to the left. So I go down 1, 2, 3, right 1. And that is line number one, okay? And as you can see, a line's going to have a bunch of different points. These are just two of them, but there's like here, 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 a bunch of everywhere is a point, okay? And what the points represent is that if I put that coordinate in for x, then y is going to equal the other coordinate. Okay, so number two, 3x minus 5y equals negative 15. Now think about it. Are the x and y on the same side or are they on opposite sides? They look to me like they're on the same side. So the best way to graph it is to find the double zero with the x and y intercepts. So I'm going to make that plus negative 5y, and I'm going to write 3x plus negative 5y equals negative 15. And I'll write it down a second time. Okay, so sweet, I know that x is 0. I can eliminate that. And I dot the negative 5 and then divide by negative 5, and that's positive 3, okay? And then y is 0, dot the 3x, so divide by 3, divide by 3, and that's going to be negative 5. Okay, so then I stay and go left, and I go up, and I stay. So I graph these together. So 0, 3, 1, 2, 3, there's your first point. And if x is negative 5, y ends up as 0, so I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and there's your second one. So those are the x and y intercepts. And again, those are just two of many points, infinite number of points on the graph. Okay, so the next three problems, it says write an equation with the given information because the information changes from problem to problem. So to write an equation, I put equals, and we're going to have y by itself, okay, because it's best, because then I know my x is here, and its slope goes in front of it plus something else, which is a y-intercept. That's the M blank, and that's a B blank. And I'm going to do that for all these, okay, because that's my job on this whole entire page is to just fill out the equation. Okay, so I need to know my M and I need to know my B. Well, this one's easy. The M is given to us. Anytime they tell us what the slope equals, that's given. I know it. So negative 2. Some of you have know it under there. It means you just put negative 2. And then the B, if, I, if they tell me what the y-intercept is, that's my B. Okay, so I know it too, and I know that 6, so that one's easy, y equals negative 2x plus 6. All right, now the next one's a little bit tougher, it gets tougher from problem to problem. i got to find my m, and i got to find my b, so here's the m, and I know it because it's, I'm writing know it because I know what my slope is. It's negative 5, and m is the slope, so I can put negative 5 here. Okay, now under the b, I don't know the y-intercept like they knew. They told me here. Okay, it's my job to find it. So to find b, I use my y equals m dot x plus b formula. And I eliminate these. And remember, the m is what I have over here at and that's negative 5, okay? And then I use the only xy coordinate that I know, and that's negative 4, 7. So I'm going to put 7 above the y, and then negative 4 above the x. We've got to remember, it's times negative 4. 
Now I drop my equals. Okay, what's over here all by itself? Probably the number 7. Then on the other side, I take negative 5 times negative 4. That's 20. I actually got to do some math on that side. Plus the letter B. Now it's smart to put a 1 in front of the B so it has a multiplier and put a dot and I circle it. So I need to get this 20 so it's on not on the same size as B. It's supposed to go with the 7 over here. So if it doesn't have a sign, it's positive, and so I'm going to switch it to minus 20. And then I'm minus 20 here. So I drop the equals, and 7 minus 20 is negative 13. And then having a B with a 1 and a dot, okay, as long as the, the dotted number is 1, which it is, that's my B. So I can put negative 13 in there, and I have my equation. Okay, and then the next one, I got to find M and I got to find B. Now, in this particular problem, they did not tell me what the slope is of the line. Okay, it's my job to find the actual slope. So the formula, when I don't know it, because I knew it here and I knew it here, but I don't know it here. So, Y minus Y, X minus X. So I'm going to... Minus, minus, and I didn't give you a lot of room to work here. I'm sorry about that. So which two letter numbers have the Ys above them? 8, 0. So it's 8 and 0. And then the two numbers with the Xs are the negative 2 and the negative 6. So I go negative 2 and then negative 6. So 8 minus 0 is 8. And then, remember, those two negatives and minuses, if I have the same sign back-to-back, -back, we make them plus-plus. And then negative 2 plus 6 is 4. So 8 divided by 4 equals 2. So I can put a 2 now for my M. Again, in the B, they don't tell me what the Y-intercept is, so therefore I do not know what the B is. I'm going to need my B formula. So Y equals M dot X plus B. So we can eliminate these three things. And again, the M comes from over here, this part. So I know that that's 2. And now I have two different X, Y coordinates. I'm going to use the one that's over here. Okay, I'm going to forget about that one. Notice how I'm taking it off the screen. So I'm going to have a 0 above the Y, and I'm going to have a, negative, a times negative 6 here. Okay, So I want to drop the equals, and what do I have there? I have 0. And 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, plus that letter B that I don't know yet, okay? So I drop the 1, and I, there's no 1 to drop, I'm sorry, I just put a 1 in front of the B. You can always put a 1 in front of a letter if you need a multiplying number, okay? So I have to get this minus 12 to join the 0. So opposite of negative 12 is plus 12. And 0 plus 12 is 12. Now, again, having that 1 as my dotted number means the multiplier is 1. So 1 times B equals 12. So that means I just know that B is 12. Okay? So Y equals 2X plus 12. Okay. And those formulas are on the board. But they're only to be used when you don't know what it is. See, like on this one, how the heck am I supposed to use... The formula, when I, I, I don't need to, I already know what the slope is, so I just put it there. And again, I know the B if they tell me the Y-intercept, it's 6. Okay, and then we have two story problems. Sorry, only seven problems, I guess. A class charges a $50 registration fee, and that's a Y right there. Can't read it very well. Registration along $24 per class. Find the cost of five classes. So I want to use my three boxes, and we need to get very familiar with this because the problems are going to get much harder than this. So I've got money for Y, money and classes, and then it specifically states what we should have is X and what we should have is Y. The Y should be the money, and the X should be the number of classes that I take. 
so per. Okay, so I put the Y on top, per class on bottom. Now, how much money does it cost per class? It costs $24, okay, so I put 24. Now, because it goes up by the same money amount every time, it goes in a straight line. That means it goes up, it's steady progression. So Y, X, and then Y up here. Now, first thing I need to do, since X stands for classes, I know that they cost $24 per class. So I don't know how many classes, so I just put a 24 with the X, 24 times X. Okay, and then I eliminate my first Y, and what become, comes before $24 per class is the $50. Okay, and this, these are always going to be going up, so we're always going to be writing plus. Okay, so when I write my equation, I've got 50 plus 24X, and then Y goes on the other side. Now, there's a final value. I've, I've done, I'm done with this and I'm done with this. But what about the five classes? Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to find what they cost. So I'm going to put five classes down here. And five's label is classes. And classes is X, okay? So I'm going to put a little X above that. Now I go find the X right there. There's a 24 right in front of it, so I better put a parentheses and then just put 5 inside of it. So what do we have over here? We just have Y. And over here I've got 50 plus 24 parentheses, but now there's a 5 there. Okay, now what's the letter I still see? I see Y. And the Y is isolated from everything else. Okay? So I plug that into my calculator. If that letter's isolated, you can just plug this into the calculator. 50 plus 24 times 5. I got 170. So 170 equals Y. And Y is dollars, so it would be $170. Okay, number 7. When I get my bike repaired, I'm charged $150 for the part along $15 per hour of labor. If I am charged $202.50, how many hours did it take to repair my car? Okay. Make this box kind of bigger than I did on the first one. I didn't give you much room. Okay, the units are the dollars and the hours. Okay. It says that we need the dollars to be Y and the hours are to be X. So per and dollars per hour. Dollars per hour, it's 15, so $15 per hour. So we start with a money amount, I think, and then the hours start, and then I get to another money amount. Okay, so dollars per hour is 15, so we're going to put 15 as our X multiplier. And then before the $15, I've got 150. And that is plus at fifteen dollars per hour is being added. Okay, but don't you can't add them because we don't know how many hours. Okay, so I cross these out and now I can write my equation. So I have one hundred and fifty. I'm going to be adding fifteen dollars per hour to that cost, so fifteen x because I don't know the hours, and then y because it'd be fifteen times the hours. Okay, then my last value is the two o two. 50. Okay, now what labels on 202.50? That's dollars. So dollars is Y. Okay, so I'm going to put a little Y above that. Okay, so now I go find my Y. It's right here, and there's no number in front of it like there is with an X. So I can just scribble it out and put 202.50. So what do I have over there now? Instead of Y, I have 202.50. And then over here, I have 150 plus 15x. Okay, now what letter do I have left? I have x left. Okay, so since I have x left, I ask myself, is the x by itself? Is it isolated? No, it's not. There's a bunch of stuff with it. So to isolate it, I dot the x and circle it. And then we got to separate it from this 150 first. That's positive, so I'm going to minus $150. So I got 202 
0.50 minus 150, and I get 52.5, okay? And over here we got 15 dot x. And now it's time to divide to separate the 15 from the x. To separate the dotted number from the x, we're going to divide. So I take 52.5 divided by 15, and that's 3.5. Okay, so x is 3.5, and remember the x label was the hours, so 3.5 hours, three and a half hours.